begin the explanation of fetal circulation, let's just go over a couple things that might be helpful that we learned in adult circulation that um, I think will be useful as we apply it to fetal circulation. So you learned before that on these models, red represents oxygenated blood flow and blue represents where deoxygenated blood is flowing. That's the same thing for here. Red is oxygenated, blue is deoxygenated. Um, another thing that you learn is that arteries take blood away from the heart. Here's the pulmonary artery or the pulmonary trunk. Here's your aorta. These are arteries. And veins bring blood towards your heart. So this is your, for example, superior vena cava, bringing blood to the heart. So those two things you can keep in mind. Red is oxygenated, blue is deoxygenated. And then secondly, arteries away from the heart, veins, blood flow to the heart. Okay, so let me begin. Um, one thing I want to start with is the fact that in a fetus, we are not using the lungs, or a fetus does not use the lungs to oxygenate blood. Okay, keep in mind, right, this little one is going to be in amniotic fluid inside of an amniotic sac. It's not breathing environmental air like you and I do. So where is it getting its oxygen from? Right here, the placenta. And this is where I'm going to start, run through the pathway, and stop each of the three times that I describe what's happening, because there's three main pathways that I want you to know. But we're starting and stopping right here. This is kind of an easy way to understand this. So. We're going to start at the umbilical veins. That's what you see in red. These venules here in the placenta are eventually going to converge in on one umbilical vein. That one umbilical vein is going to run all the way through the umbilical cord. That's what this is right here, the umbilical cord. And of course, it's carrying oxygenated blood. So what happens here? That oxygenated blood comes all the way up the umbilical vein and it enters into, well, it enters into the body at the umbilicus. That's your belly button right there. And it, once it's in the body cavity, it goes up into the liver and you can see right here, there's a converging point, right? So what happens here is your umbilical vein is coming up and it meets up with this inferior vena cava at something called the ductus venosus. The ductus venosus that I'm pointing to right here is the duct between two veins. Listen to the name, ductus venosus, the duct between two veins. And what are those two veins? It's the umbilical vein and it's the inferior vena cava. All right, so what happens here? We have red, we have blue, and red and blue make purple. That's why on this model, we saw red and blue only, but here we're seeing red, blue, and purple, because again, when you mix red and blue, you get purple. So kind of easy to understand. But nonetheless, from the ductus venosus, right under here, blood is gonna enter to the heart. So again, this is the first of three pathways I wanna describe. The first pathway that blood can go through is very similar to the way that blood moves through you and I. Right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk to the lungs, left atrium, left ventricle, and then up and out the aorta. Okay, same as you and I. And from there, here's your aortic arch. If we follow here in purple, that would be the descending abdominal aorta. Um, this will eventually split into the iliac arteries. Those are going to go into each leg, going to come down this side, down this side, and then back up this side, back up this side as the umbilical arteries. These are the two purple ones that you see here. These are the blue ones at this point that are running all the way through, remember, arteries away, and they're going to the placenta, carrying deoxygenated blood. Okay, now what just happened? We ran through the heart the same way we did in you and I. Right atrium, right ventricle to the lungs, left atrium, left ventricle to the body. 
But keep in mind, when blood goes to the lungs in the fetal circulation, it's not going there to get oxygenated. It's just moving through the tissue. Where are we making our gas exchange? Right here at the capillary level. These blue umbilical arteries are making their gas exchange and getting, picking up, dropping off carbon dioxide, picking up oxygen, and coming back on the red umbilical veins. Okay, so that's the first pathway. Now we're on the second. So umbilical veins coming together. Here's our solitary umbilical vein running all the way through the umbilical cord again. We come up through here. Pathway number two starts the same. We go to that ductus venosus. And what happens at the ductus venosus? The duct between two veins, right? We jump into the right atrium again. From the right atrium to the right ventricle, from the right ventricle, we jump up the pulmonary trunk and right here, this little spot that I'm tapping right here. In fact, I'm gonna show it to you on the adult model. Right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk, right here. See that little white thing right there? So in a fetus, that's open. Right here, blood can actually move from the pulmonary trunk to the aorta from the pulmonary trunk to the aorta because this is open. It's called the ductus arteriosus, the duct between two arteries. Pulmonary trunk is an artery, aorta is an artery. You know that because they're both taking blood away from the heart. That's open when you and I are a fetus. Again, ductus arteriosus, the duct between two arteries. Before we're born, this closes off and we're left with this. This is what you and I have. It's called the ligamentum arteriosum. Ligamentum, because it is now the ligament between two arteries. Ligamentum arteriosum. Okay? But when we do that, when blood does that in that pathway, again, it's pathway number two here, right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk, uh, ductus arteriosus, and then into the aorta, that's it. Blood completely skips the lungs, and what does it do? From the thoracic aorta, it goes down the abdominal aorta, splits into those iliac arteries again, goes down into this leg, goes down to this leg, comes back from this leg, comes back from this leg, and again, those umbilical arteries, purple here, purple here, they're gonna run all the way through the umbilical cord, and again, make their gas exchange out here at the placenta. That's pathway number two. The third and final pathway I want you to remember, again, starts here. So umbilical veins, umbilical vein, umbilical vein, that's the red one that's running all the way through the umbilical cord, enters at our umbilicus or our belly button, runs all the way up here, starting off the same way as you know, and we go to the ductus venosus, the duct between two veins. At this point, we then go into the right atrium. Now what? Look at this. You see how I can put my pointer right through there? What I'm implying here is that blood can flow from the right atrium directly to the left atrium. If we go right atrium to left atrium, now what happens? Left atrium, left ventricle, up and out the aorta. We just skipped the lungs again. Right atrium, left atrium, left ventricle, up and out the aorta all the way down, descending abdominal aorta, iliac arteries, again, down here, down here, back up, back up, and then those umbilical arteries are gonna take that blood all the way out to the placenta. And again, we'll make our gas exchange here. So let me show you something else now. If we look at the heart, like I mentioned, blood can go through it in three pathways. All right, and it, this could be happening simultaneously. Don't think that it's got to go one route one time and one route the next time and the third route. It's always happening, okay? But if we look at this, right atrium, right ventricle to the lungs, left atrium, left ventricle up and out to the body. That's the first way. Second way would be right atrium, right ventricle up and out to the lungs, but we don't go to the lungs. What happens? 
we jump and pass through, we as in blood, jumps and passes through this ductus arteriosus, the duct between two arteries, and then jumps into the aorta, and then that's it. Completely skips these two chambers. It just goes right into the aorta and then moves through the rest of the body. The third pathway, let me open this up for one second here. If we look internally, what we'll see is when blood comes into this right atrium, we'll see this structure right here. This is, in you and I, called the fossa ovalis, this little white circle right here, this little white oval. Fossa is a shallow depression, ovalis because it's oval shaped. In you and I, when we were a fetus, this was open, okay? Remember, I, I put the pointer right through here, and I called it the foramen oval. Foramen is a natural opening or a passageway. Oval, it's oval-shaped. This once was the foramen oval. This was open, and it allowed blood to go from the right atrium directly to the left atrium, left atrium, left ventricle, and then up and out the aorta. But when we're born, this one closes off, okay? Hopefully it closes off. You may have heard of a, a, a baby that's born with a hole in their heart. That can actually mean several things. One of those can mean that this foramen oval didn't close properly. But in you and I, uh, in a healthy individual, right, uh, with, with, with no heart problems there, no heart defects, that fossa ovalis forms and it creates a little scar tissue. That's the scar tissue that you and I have inside of our hearts there. But that pathway allows, again, right atrium, left atrium, left ventricle, and then up and out the aorta. That allows us to bypass the lungs one more time as we run through the, the fetal circulatory system. Thank you.